Hello there and thank you so much for joining me here at CDCon 2021 for my talk Cruising Through the Cloud Native Space Across 100 Days of Kubernetes. Now I really hope you're enjoying your virtual experience this far. I'm going to be available in the chat and later after the talk for a live Q&A. So if you have any thoughts, anything you want to share, comment that in the live chat. Let's get started. You might have come across a hashtag called 100 days of Kubernetes before, maybe a similar one called 100 days of cloud or 100 days of code. And this is exactly what I'm here to talk to you about today. Well, more specifically, the journey of how did it come about to this hashtag? What is like, what does it mean? And how can you get started as well and get involved? My name is Anais Urlis. I'm a site reliability engineer at Sivo. Sivo is a cloud computing company that's based on Kubernetes, specifically based on a distribution called K3S. I'm also still studying for my computer science degree. And before getting started in DevOps about 10, 11 months ago, I was working for several years in the blockchain space. So when I transitioned into DevOps, I had to learn everything from scratch, pretty much. If you have any questions after the talk, if you want to stay in touch, here's my Twitter handle at Orlisanais. Also, always happy to people tweet at me. <laughs> so here's my Twitter handle. Anyway, well, let's talk about platforms. Let's start there because it really matters. It, it feeds into the entire storyline in a way. So you might be familiar with some of these logos here. This is Google Podcasts, this is Twitter and YouTube. And these are ultimately platforms where people share content. And these might be knowledge or thoughts or opinions that they share, but it allows others to get engaged. It's publicly sharing content on a specific topic, right? And that could also be at conferences such as this one, where people share with you some of their understanding, an instance in time of what they are thinking about, what they are working on. So people are about creating platforms, creating platforms for themselves, creating platforms for their thoughts. That could be at a dinner conversation, you creating a platform for yourself. It could also be at, at your company to create a platform to showcase your amazing ideas, to showcase uh, what you want to do within a specific project, right? People are all about creating platforms in various formats and could be either publicly, such as on these platforms that I just showed you, or just in private within your social network. Now, the thing is about platforms and about people sharing their understanding on platforms is that it's usually just a knowledge snapshot that they share with people around them, that they share with the community. It's just an instance in time of their knowledge, of their understanding of a topic. A lot of times when I'm giving a talk, I don't like that talk one month, two months down the line because my understanding of the topic has advanced over time. And I might not like what I've said or what I thought or how I did or used a specific technology at that time. So these knowledge snapshots have one thing in common. They are all just instance in time of somebody's understanding. You might not know what goes into that understanding. And that leads us to what actually does it, like where does your knowledge actually come from? And I want to use this analogy of different knowledge buckets. So when we're reading or learning about a topic, we basically derive our information from different sources. And I just divided the sources I'm heavily using into three different buckets. And I will walk you through that in a second. Um, now, you might have 50 different buckets. I might just use three for this analogy. And when I'm getting started within a specific space or with a specific topic, I might start reading a lot of blog posts, a lot of blog content, and it might be from companies. It might also be personal blogs that I come across. Now, with personal blogs, I, they don't usually go into great detail. They usually specify specific use cases. So I like to add books to that mix. And books and blog posts have one thing in common. After a talk, I can share with you the content, the blog posts and the books that I found were really useful for my understanding, to gather my understanding of that specific content, of a specific topic. Now, the thing is, additionally to this mix comes conversations. Now, these might be conversations that you have in your network, that you have with coworkers or with anybody online. So they might not necessarily happen in public. And usually we don't share our conversations in blog posts or share them in books and write about them, right? If you're not a poet, if you're not a philosopher, you might not necessarily share those anywhere. So people not necessarily know what goes into those buckets. They might be like black boxes of just, nobody really knows where somebody got their understanding from. A lot of times when people tell me about their understanding or their, yeah, their understanding about a specific topic, I ask them, how do you know that? Like, where does that knowledge come from? And not, like pretty often they don't know <laughs> i bet like a lot of times when people ask me i wouldn't necessarily know um how i how i know something right but 
a lot of times when we share our understanding on a platform, we require people to just believe that we do know, right? Because we have might have built up the reputation over time or, or not. So this is one of the problems here. We don't necessarily know what goes into those different knowledge buckets. And that leaves people learning about a new topic in this dark forest of questions. How do I get started? How do I navigate through this dark forest? So we don't necessarily know what goes into those knowledge buckets. How do we navigate it? How does somebody get started with, for instance, Kubernetes or other technologies? How can we tell people how to get started and how to navigate their space without feeling completely lost? In the real world, we would use maps. We would lose lots of maps or Google Maps to tell us how to get from point A to point B. And that's amazing, right? And we can utilize that as well in the space. So we can, for example, create mind maps such as this one. This is a mind map that tells you how to get or how to get well, how to get started in the DevOps space. So how to get from point A to point B and learn about everything that we might need in a DevOps engineering role. Now, the thing is with these mind maps, they are obviously amazing in providing a starting point. The thing is that they take away a little bit of the fun on one side. And on the other side, they, they provide a lot of uncertainties. So when we see this mind map, we might not see something really exciting that we want to get started with, but this long path of like, oh, I have to learn all of that. And it doesn't necessarily provide you the immediate success experience that you're aiming for, and it would keep you going. So additionally, we don't necessarily know if we tell you to learn about the ICD pipelines, you don't necessarily know what topics you should actually learn about, what blog posts you should read to learn about the topic. So this is kind of the problem with these mind maps. So when I got started in DevOps, I came across this map, this cloud native ecosystem map by the CNCF. And I looked at it and I was like, wow, this is quite a lot. There's a lot of different projects. This is quite scary. Oh my God. Right? <laughs> so this is kind of the process that a lot of people go through. And nobody knows this entire map. Obviously, nobody knows this entire map. It's crazy, right? So the thing is, when I got started, I was like, okay, what can I do to help people to make these technologies that are listed here more accessible and allow more people to get involved, right? And the thing is, I thought back about, okay, how did I get started in the blockchain space? Because it's basically, it's similar. You're learning, you're going through another learning experience, right? The thing is, when I got started in the blockchain space, a lot of the things that I was reading about, a lot of the things that I was writing about, it was all closed within the company that I was working at. It was nothing that I shared publicly. I would maybe periodically share content pieces that are quite opinionated and so on. So people didn't quite know what went into those opinionated content pieces that I would periodically just put out. So I thought, hey, okay, I'm just getting started in the DevOps space, but I could use it to my advantage. If you're just getting started in a space, you are at a really, like you at a high advantage over others who have been in a space for a long time and I will elaborate on that, but you are in a lucky position, my friend. So um, I was thinking, hey, what can I do? And that's where 100 Days of Kubernetes ultimately came from. This is my YouTube channel and public Notion page where I started to share all of my notes. And it basically details exactly what I just said. It details all of the projects that I have been looking at, everything that I've been reading about. I tried to share those links here in the notes as well to get more people involved. Now, <laughs> this worked to my surprise and to, yeah, making me really happy that a lot of people actually found this really useful and got started with their own 100 days of Kubernetes learning journey, uh, which makes me really excited and really happy about. You can check out the 100 days of Kubernetes hashtag on Twitter after this talk to see more amazing stories and how people are right now learning about 100 days of Kubernetes. Now, Within that, we created this page called 100 days of Kubernetes.io, which started to host first all of my Notion notes, but then the community started to build upon that and advance those notes. So whether you're just getting started or you have been in the space for a long time and you already know about Kubernetes, your input here would be highly appreciated. Just a quick shout out. So the thing is, this doesn't really help us to navigate through the stack force. Yes, it might provide us with a clearer map, with clearer guidance, but you might still have an iffy feeling in your tummy of like, okay, Anais, this is all great, but how do I get started with this? Like, what can I actually do here? So, <laughs> what can I tell you? Well, this iffy feeling is completely normal. That's the first thing. 
right? A lot of times when I see amazing people post amazing things, I get this really iffy feeling and I feel like this puppy of like, oh, I'm really, really confused. What is happening here? How do I get started? What do I actually do? And that's from a, some self-doubt, but also some imposter syndrome and just a lot of confusion of what do I do now? Well, my immediate feedback is here. Nobody expects you to start with 100 days of Kubernetes. Nobody expects you to start from this massive thing, right? You can start small, as small as possible. You don't have to start with something huge, right? You can get started with the smallest of steps along the path, along the journey, right? And that will be a lot more valuable in the future. Because if you just go ahead and you write a book, right? People might come across your book. You might be amazing in marketing your book. But this is ultimately a big bang that not many people will be around to hear. So if you just go ahead and you're writing a book about your understanding of a specific knowledge, you're ignoring a lot of what went into that understanding. So a lot of times when you're learning about something, this might be some part of the journey, right? You might uh, read some blog posts. You might write some blog posts. You might be engaging with some live streams, listening to live streams. You start reading a lot, like a lot, a lot on the topic. And then from there, you might decide, okay, I'm going to create my own YouTube videos and share my understanding. And then like YouTube is, you get some uh, critical comments and you reconsider, okay, what am I actually learning about? How am I learning about it? How can I reshare the information better? And you start learning about new topics. And then down, along, uh, down the line, you come across some really nice open source tools that you start learning about and you want to contribute to them. So you start doing that. And then because you're already involved with the community, you get some speaking engagements and people reaching out to you to collaborate. And in the end, you write that book. Now, the difference between this and what I showed you earlier, which is just basically showing to write a book, is that people will know what went into you writing this book, right? In this scenario, people know what is the entire learning journey like, right? They will know the kind of blog posts you wrote. They will know the kind of things that you said on live streams a year ago. And in the end, they will see you writing that book. And it will obviously build up a lot more credibility because you're not asking just people to believe you and to give you that trust that that requires for people to engage in your content. And that's basically where the idea for 100 Days of Kubernetes came from. We want to make this entire learning journey, as messy as it might be, more visible, more accessible to a wider audience. And that involves sharing those little blog posts and sharing the, the different content that goes into learning about, for instance, Kubernetes in this case. And this idea doesn't really, <laughs> that was my idea. I came across 100 Days of Code when I started to learn code <laughs> coding, specifically front-end development, several years ago. And then I came across 100 Days of Cloud when I got started in the DevOps space. Now, the thing is with both of them, they are quite broad. And I was like, hey, I just want to focus on Kubernetes. So that's why I decided to just do 100 Days of Kubernetes. You could be doing anything related to 100 Days. You could be doing, uh, I don't know, 100 Days of Cooking or whatever you feel like it. It's just basically the commitment of, hey, I'm doing this journey across a specific time frame. You could also be doing 50 or 30 or 10 days, right? It doesn't really matter. But the point here is that it connects a community to engage about a specific topic. So if you're interested in either coding or um, cloud engineering, anything related, check out those communities. They have some really amazing resources. And ultimately, these communities make visible what's within those knowledge buckets. They allow more people to get involved, right? Most of us don't have a degree in the topics that we want to learn about five years after we got that degree. So how do we keep learning? How do we keep engaging in new conversations, in new topics? How, we, how do we advance our understanding of a specific topic? This is relevant for anybody, whether you are in your 20s, whether you're in your 50s, right? So we want to just make visible what's inside those buckets. How can others get involved? How can they share? How can they feel motivated about getting involved as well? And this ultimately over time can build you up those platforms. If that's what you're seeking, right? If it's not what you're into, that's completely fine, right? Not everybody has to share everything publicly online. That's not the point. That doesn't matter, right? But ultimately, uh, if you're for that, if you're about that, people will be giving you more credibility over time if you start with these small steps. 
So I want to leave you here with some practical tips of how you can get started, what you can do now uh, if you want to learn about a new topic. Some of the advice that really, that would have helped me if I, if somebody would have talked to me like 10 months ago or several years ago about it, right? So first thing is really start anywhere. It doesn't matter where you start. You could just with anything, just Google or something, any topic that you're interested in, check out some different blog posts on Medium or Dev2 or similar, and you will come across some interesting resources. It doesn't matter where you start because if you're obsessing about where to start, you it might well prevent you from getting started in the first place. And then the next thing is start small. There's no need for you to commit to 100 days. That's a lot to do, right? It's really just about you starting small, getting started with something, anything. Start writing some tweets, maybe following some people on Twitter or some others writing about the topics that you want to learn about. And then from there, you can advance. And this goes aligned with this theory called do something. It's a motivational theory of how, how do you motivate yourself? How do you trigger action in yourself? And the idea is not that um, action comes from motivation, but it also a lot of motivation comes from action. It's a lot, it's a circle. It's not like one on the other. So if you start small with anything really, you can advance and feel more motivated over time and more engaged in the topics that you learn subsequential about that thing, right? So action isn't just the effect of motivation, but also the cause of it. So that's why I basically highly suggest you just start doing anything because you will feel more motivated doing, going started, right? And then this is a bit controversial, but I highly suggest you to do that, is working in public. Obviously, it's really, really scary. And nobody just expects it from day one to the other to make everything that you're doing public. But it would be my number one advice for you unlocking career opportunities or any opportunities by that matter, because people will see what you're working on, what you're doing on a day-to-day -day basis. And that will allow them to engage with your work and provide you feedback, provide you help, and also advance your own skills. So working in public is not only beneficial for you, but also beneficial for the community. If a lot of people wouldn't share their own learning experience online, I, would, <laughs> I wouldn't have had it as easy to get started with specific topics. Because if newbies in the space, people such as myself, rely on others to share their understanding, to share their use cases to advance. So working in public can also mean a lot of different things. It's not just putting my podcast or those YouTube videos out there. It's also contributing to open source. And you don't have to be an engineer to be able to contribute to open source. You really don't. You can be uh, a content writer. You can be a technical analyst. You can be just interested in using technologies, right? Because those open source tools, they need feedback on their documentation. They need people to help them replicate issues that other people have in the community. There's a lot that you can contribute to in open source that doesn't require filing PRs and asking maintainers for feedback. Then there are also different programs, such as ambassador programs. The CD Foundation, as well as the CNCF, have, some, have ambassador programs and several different mentorship programs and other opportunities that you can get involved on and advance your skills and get feedback from the community and be part of the community in a more meaningful way, maybe, than just periodically dropping in and out. So if that's something you're interested in, I highly suggest you to check that out. And then in the end, it's about share your notes, ask for feedback, be bold about it, right? Sometimes I message people and I'm like, hey, I want to work for you. Or, hey, I really want to speak with you on a talk. Like, just give a talk with you. And sometimes people don't reply and that's okay, right? You don't have to reply. It's supposed to be a compliment. It's supposed to be me sharing, hey, I think you can add a lot of value to my learning experience, to my own career growth. And sharing your notes online will allow others to contribute, but also help others to get involved and to get started on a topic. Because ultimately, you are the only one who has this understanding that you have on a specific topic. And that leads us to collaboration. Sharing your content online and getting involved in a community allows for collaboration, allows for higher motivation to get started, to keep going. Now, collaboration can come in several different forms. There are some amazing, amazing communities, such as Discord community for ladies in DevOps, that share opportunities and initiatives that you can get involved in. So I highly suggest you to keep an eye out on those. Just check it out. And then it's really about taking risks. 
I can help you or share my learning journey through this dark forest, but I ultimately can't navigate the forest of questions for you. You will have to find a way to ask your own questions, to try to understand what's important for you, for yourself to learn throughout maybe 100 days or just what you want to advance within a specific topic and the knowledge that you want to gain. So nobody can do this for you. You're the only one who can make that jump. And then it's also about iteration. And I want to really highlight that because nobody is wakes up in the morning with all of their understanding in their brain and writes a book. That doesn't exist, okay? None of us are experts. There's no such thing as experts, just people who have done something for a long time and it does have built up higher credibility and trust within the community. So it's all about iteration. It's completely okay if you disagree with your past self. It's okay, do that. It adds how you value to your thought process and ultimately provides you with more credibility over time by the community. So really, yeah, trust yourself and iteration on your content. It's okay, it's cool to do that. And then, well, that's it. I want to leave you with these two resources with 100 days of kubernetes.io. I will be available for live Q&A now, hopefully, and you can find me on Twitter at Oli Sanais. Thank you so much for listening. Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for joining my talk. I'm now available for live Q&A. So if you have any questions, please do drop them into the chat so I can go ahead and answer and share maybe more resources. If you have any questions around 100 days of Kubernetes, what is it? How do you get started? How do you find resources in the first place? What is the community like behind 100 days of Kubernetes? Um, what is it like maybe to get started working professionally in this space in the cloud native ecosystem, anything related? Thank you so much for the comments. I'm reading them all, it means a lot. So thank you so much for commenting and saying hi in the chat. That's really great. Um, I have like eight minutes. So if there are any questions, if not, I'm also available always on my Twitter at Urlisanay. So if you have any questions after the talk or you're watching the recording, then uh, feel free to reach out also on Twitter. And we have an amazing community at 100 days of kubernetes.io where you can find also all of the resources. So if there are no questions, I can just maybe talk a bit more about how you can find resources and get started because a lot of times I'm sharing this, this learning journey that I kind of took on and I started it really from a selfish perspective. Like I wanted to learn about Kubernetes and I was like, hey, how do I learn best about it? And forcing myself to do video content and write about it was kind of my my way of learning about it better, more easy, easily. <laughs> so uh, I started from really selfish perspective and just started learning about it, right? Uh, so there's one question. How is day one to 10 starting um, is the issue? How do you keep yourself motivated? That's a really good question. So first of all, before you get started, um, depending on which kind of person you are, I mentioned in the talk that a lot of times you just want to start with anything, any idea. And through having this initial idea and this drive of like, okay, let's get started, you have more motivation sometimes than if you plan out. But other people, me, myself included, I like to have some goals set and those goals will then help me to orient myself. So for instance, my first goal was, okay, I want to get more proficient in the space because I want to work professionally in the DevOps space. So that was my goal, get a job, get an engineering job. And my next goal is get a certification, um, become Kubernetes certified. Um, so you set those goals and then from there you can then filter out okay what do you have to learn to reach those goals and a lot of times follow people who are on similar journeys or follow people who are working in the space because they will share amazing content with you and that will help you a lot um what else some insight about cube quests i'm not sure what cube quests are <laughs> so if you can elaborate in the chat i can comment on that um that would be helpful but yeah, so my number one tip is follow people who are within the space, who are learning about similar topics, who are using similar topics, content, um, skills in their day-to-day -day work, and they will share amazing content. I also have a weekly DevOps newsletter where I share all the resources from other people that I find really helpful. So you can also find that on my on my Twitter account, Sivo Cubecrest. Oh yeah, so the company I'm working with is called Sivo Cloud and we have a challenge called Cubecrest. Now I'm not directly involved, so I'm not the most reliable source, but if you sign up, then you, you can check out Cubecrest, which 
it helps you to get started with Kubernetes, basically, and and use the platform. Uh, but this is about 100 days of Kubernetes, and you can basically use any tool, any platform to get started in the cloud native ecosystem. Yeah, so I highly suggest you to find actually those, um, well, those challenges. A lot of companies, they have, first of all, they have amazing tutorials. They, you will find amazing beginner tutorials on a lot of company websites. So for instance, if you're looking for GitHub action tutorials to get started with CICD pipelines, you will find on some company websites really amazing starter tutorials and you can start following them. Or um, they also have, several companies have uh, online challenges that you can start, which help you guide you through uh, the topic itself. Are there any other questions, any thoughts, any ideas, any um, curiosity of where is 100 days of Kubernetes going? Um, how long does it take? It doesn't just take 100 days. I'm really not too consistent, I guess. I'm right now at day 40, actually. So that's it's going to be interesting finishing it. Thank you. Is there any group on Discord or Slack? So uh, there's a Slack community that you can join. If you check out community100 daysofkubernetes.io, that will lead you to the Discord chat where you can ask questions and share any interesting resources that you come across and where other people also share their learning experience and um, ideas on getting started with Kubernetes and as DevOps engineers in the DevOps cloud space. So it's community100 daysofkubernetes.io and you can find the community there. And generally on Twitter with the hashtag 100 days of Kubernetes, you will find what other people are doing in their own learning journey around Kubernetes. So it's really about just uh, getting started with a topic that you want to learn about. It could be anything, it could also be learning a language or cooking and starting small and then from there expanding and finding resources that help you advance in that topic. And framing it as 100 days of Kubernetes allows for a community to form around it, which is in many cases more motivational. Awesome, make sure to join the community chat. Thank you for joining this talk. This was really great. Thank you for engaging. If there are any other questions, make sure to comment in the chat. I'm, I'm here to answer any questions that are around there for around 100 days of Kubernetes. A lot of times if you want to learn about something, Start, if you want to learn about Kubernetes, start Googling Kubernetes, and then you will find resources that will um, give you more questions, let's say. And once you have those questions, for example, once you start reading about Kubernetes, and then you come across, oh, what are Kubernetes pods? And then you start reading about pods, and from there you can kind of branch off in those different areas, and that's how I tend to learn about a specific topic. Awesome. If you're into live streams, there are also several live streams where I show live how I get started with those different topics. So make sure to check them out. Um, there are several people in the space also around Docker and just getting started in general with DevOps who create amazing resources. So make sure to follow them on Twitter. If you come across their profile or some other people's profile, it's, it's really about that. Have a look at who the CD Foundation is retweeting and what content they are posting out there and whom they are featuring in their talks or on this conference and follow people from the conference because they're likely posting about similar topics that will help you get started in the space. Awesome, thank you so much for joining. Cool, if there are no other questions, I'm gonna jump off now, but thank you so much for attending my talk. This was really amazing. I hope you have a lovely rest days of the conference <laughs> and to see you at 100 days of kubernetes.io and also make sure to check out the hashtag hashtag 100 days of kubernetes thank you so much for joining that was that was really great <laughs> i hope those resources are useful also the slides you can find them in the link below this the screen here they are linked there on the chat platform i don't know how to call it but you can find the, the slides there as well if you missed the talk and the recording will also be posted. Okay, bye-bye. <laughs>